I've been editing videos now for over eight years and last year on this day, I switched to DaVinci Resolve. I really know the struggle of trying to learn a new software, watching all of the YouTube videos that you can find, just to find the best way of doing things. And then realizing that what you learned on the software before kind of became useless. So over the past few months, I've actually put effort and time into learning everything a beginner should know in DaVinci Resolve. And I think I got a pretty good understanding of it and I wanna share it with you guys. These are in no specific order. I just kind of came up with a list of things that I think it's very important for you guys to know and kind of started with it. So let's start right away with smart pins, which is one of my favorite things in DaVinci Resolve. A smart pin is a folder within DaVinci Resolve that lives kind of on the cloud, which means that you can upload whatever you want that folder and access it anytime. And this is very, interesting because for example i use it for sound effects i use it for assets like film burns or overlays or anything like that which means that every time i want to add like a film burn transition or i want to add a sound effect all i gotta do is go into smart bin type it got it done i don't have to go into finder onto a hard drive or whatever and find it that way which slows down your workflow so much more so how do we create a smart bin? Just go into the media pool, right click onto smart bin, create a new folder, name it whatever you want, drag and drop everything, and that's it. Now every project you open, you'll be able to access your smart bins. Color management is something that I actually discovered not too long ago, but literally blew my mind. So to access the best part of DaVinci Resolve color grading, you actually need to be editing in DaVinci Native Gamma, which means that you have to import your footage transform it and then transform it to Rec 709, which is a bit confusing, but let me explain you how to do it. So go down at the bottom and click on your project settings and then go into color management. Here, we're gonna select DaVinci YRGB, make sure that this is selected. And then down there, we're gonna select DaVinci White Gamut slash intermediate as timeline gamma color. And then as output, we're gonna select Rec 709 gamma 2.4. This is what you need because you're gonna work in DaVinci White Gamut, but when you export, it's gonna be Rec 709, which is what we want for the export. The thing is that DaVinci White Gamut allows you to access up to, I think 20 or 21 stops of dynamic range with your footage, while Rec 709 timeline allows you to only access 10. So if you're shooting with like a Sony S7S III, which has 15 stops of dynamic range or 16, you can only access 10 of those, which limits kind of your, your whole workflow so definitely make sure this is set then when you're actually color grading you just have to make sure that the first node and the last node are cst color space transform the first one you want to take your camera settings so sony s log 3 s gamma 3 cine and then you're going to transform it into davinci white gamut intermediate then you make your whatever color grading you're doing and the last node it's going from DaVinci Wide Gamma Intermediate to Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. Enters log, you work in DaVinci Gamma, exit Rec 709. Done. Talking about color grading, node based color grading, it was my biggest fear when I moved to DaVinci Resolve, and it kind of still is because I, I do understand it, but there's so many different ways of using it. But, but to make things easy, you can literally work with five to six nodes have a color space transform, as you just said, at the start, one at the end. In between, have three to four nodes. Maybe you have a primary node where you adjust all your exposure. In the middle, you have a color where you adjust all your colors. In the fourth one, you have your look. And the last one is again, a color space transform. You don't need to overcomplicate having like three nodes, merge nodes, compound nodes, and parallel nodes, all of these things. Yes, that's a different workflow, but to start off as a beginner, on DaVinci, you definitely don't need any of that. Shortcuts are something that I was actually very skeptical about when I moved from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve. Because I worked for over seven years in Premiere Pro, I knew everything by heart and I could edit so fast. So when I moved to DaVinci, I was like, oh no, now I have to find my way around this software and I don't know the shortcuts and stuff. But luckily you can go up here, DaVinci Resolve, keyboard customization, and on the top where it says DaVinci Resolve, you can change that to Premiere Pro. I have it as Luca because I personalize a few 
little buttons here and there. But the base of it, it's Premiere Pro, which means that now I can use all of my Premiere Pro shortcuts in DaVinci Resolve. This next one might actually not be a big deal for everybody, but I find it to be extremely helpful and speeds up my workflow like crazy. So when you drag a clip onto the timeline, and by the way, I only kind of edit on my edit page. I don't like to kind of sort footage in media and then cut into cut. I just edit everything into my edit session. I just like it that way. Anyways, you can do whatever you want. But for this example, we're in the edit section. So when you drag and drop a clip, the audio is obviously linked to the clip. But if I'm making a YouTube video and I want an overlay, or if I'm making a video and I want just a clip to overlay, but I don't want the audio, I don't want to every time drag the clip and then lock a layer and then delete it. It's just so time consuming. So there is a shortcut. You click on your footage onto the media pool, hold option, drag it, boom. Only the video is dragged. How nice is that? We talked about color grade, so let's dive back into that. So let's say we just graded one clip and you want to edit a clip which is shot in the same light condition. How do we do that? Simple. Clip on the clip. <laughs> clip on the clip. Click, click on the clip. <laughs> that you just color graded. Make sure the cursor little up here is selected and drag and select and highlight all of the nodes. Now press Command C or Control C on Windows and now go in the second image that you want to copy and paste and make sure you don't click in the actual node area, just click on the clip once and then Command V or Control V to paste. Simple as that. Now make your adjustment and you're done. Now let's say that you just created a whole video and you want to check if the color grade is nice and even and it matches throughout the whole video, but you can't really understand it. If you watch the video, you want to see like an actual visualization of it. I use this all the time. You go up here into the light box and you can even set a shortcut for the light box. I actually put tab, my button tab as a shortcut because I use it so often. I don't want to go up here and just click it all the time. It's just faster to have shortcuts. So you click tab, open your light box. And now what you see, it's a one frame thumbnail for every single shot you have in your movie, in your video, whatever the case is, which means that you can quickly just look at it and you can check if everything you just color graded fits with each other. And if there is anything that doesn't, you can click on the clip again, click on the clip, <laughs> turn off the light box by either clicking tab or clicking on light box. And now you just select a different clip. So if you also want to go around the whole movie without having to scroll around, just, you know, go in the light box, select the clip, close it, done, edit that one. Last one that I think that every single person who uses DaVinci Resolve should actually know, it's the magic mask. The magic mask is, I've said it before maybe, but it's probably my favorite feature of DaVinci Resolve. It's fast, it's precise, and it's stupidly working so well. Like it's mind blowing coming from Premiere Pro where masks are the worst thing on earth, <laughs> moving to DaVinci, and finding out about Magic Mask, I was like, how did I not know about this before? So pretty much all you got to do is go into Magic Mask, press on the plus little selector thing, select your area, make sure you select object or person, depending on whatever you're highlighting. And then you track it back and forth. It's super quick, even on an old MacBook like mine. And that's it. And now you can either mask something out or mask a color grade in and this is very useful especially if you want to you know put the text behind something or i mostly use it for you know i make a magic mask and then i just the exposure for like a subject or change the color there's so many things that you can do with magic mask and if there is a lot of contrast within the image if the subject or whatever thing you're highlighting you want to mask has a lot of contrast compared to the rest of the scene it works so easy that you literally just like track it boom change the color it's mind blowing how fast, it's mind blowing how easy it is, and it's mind blowing how good it is. So that was it. I hope you guys learned something new. If you're a beginner in DaVinci Resolve, I hope these tips help you to go forward in your DaVinci trip. And um, yeah, let me know below if you have any more questions and I'll see you guys in the next one.